Welcome everybody to the inaugural Techie to the Rescue Tech Talk, the rise of the Robo Influencer with my good buddy, Schwan. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, yes, sir. Schwan it is. And we're going to be doing this every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Fanbase. Uh, you might be watching this a little bit later. As you notice, I, as the techie, managed to figure out how to go in to get my profile uh, <laughs> figured out with the, yeah, and Chuan, we're going to have to work on that later. <laughs> I'm just good at TikToks, man. You do the you do the tech talk. I do the TikTok. Right. I do the tech talk. You do the TikTok. So we're just really excited to go in to do this. So since this is our inaugural episode, oh, and, the, and that noise in the background is my uh, kids in the background that they, they do their thing. But since this is the inaugural ep episode, why don't you give yourself a background uh, so that people actually know what you're about, what's going on. And as they watch future episodes of this, or they join us on fan base to go and to hear about what's going on in the tech and social world, they know what it's all about. So go ahead, take the mic, Schwan. Appreciate you. I'm Schwan um, for everyone here. And wherever you're listening to this, I, I mostly work with brands and creators to tell them what to say in videos, how to say things like, what anything that you don't want to do in social media i do and it's led me in the last three years to amassing a few billion views across TikTok, instagram facebook youtube whatever and i'm now the manager for TikTok's largest us live streamer who i met him on a social audio room like this um initially and then i built him into the largest streamer for the past two years so i'm really all about TikTok, instagram whatever growth you can get through social media while spending uh, as little as you can keep that organic, you know, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, I, I, I know. I love that as well. Um, I'm, I'm realizing I have to click two mute buttons because I've got a zoom mute button and a non zoom mute button. Normally I wouldn't have to worry about it, but as I say, kids in the background, but yeah, I'm techie from techie to the rescue. I actually used to work at Apple for over 12 years teaching people how to use technology. So I was the guy that would go and find out that listen, there happens to be a launch that's going to be taking place in a week. And by the way, here's the manual less than 24 hours before it actually comes out. And by the way, we need to teach everybody how to use this before it actually gets sold to people, which means that there also needs to be maybe a workshop that needs to be performed in front of uh, people who are seeing these devices for the first time. But of course, you don't know anything about how the device works. So good luck. And hopefully you do a great job of performing said aspects. So that was just one of many of the multiple tasks uh, that, that I have. That's, that at least is, is one that everybody goes in there like, wow, that's incredible. I thought they'd give you time. They don't give you time. That's intense. Like we'd always talked about briefly, like your time back at Apple, but just to hear like what you had really had to deal with, it's like, okay. Yeah, because they are really that secretive. They do not give out any information. So literally when a keynote is out, You've got an entire group of, of Apple staff members that are staring at the keynote and just being like Tim or Steve, because I got to be there around when Steve was there. Or, or like, what exactly are you going to be presenting to us next? And what do we need to do to be able to go in to get that implemented? Oh my God. So that's what, you, like, that secrecy, like, that's what we want to, yeah. And I feel, um, I don't know, I work with some of these like larger platforms, uh, at least in the US um, and the amount of like NDAs you have to sign just to like, yep. just to get into the, like the lobby of some of the, the location. It's, yeah, it's a little eye opening the secrecy that there is, but that's the game. No, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. So just one thing to be aware of. Yep. We want to have listening ears right now. So we're just going to go and hold that. But anyway, how do you see the AI? changing the landscape of social media influencer marketing in the coming years knowing that like right now chat gpt is a big deal and if you don't know what chat gpt is it gives you the ability to type in words and sentences for example write me a TikTok script of exactly what i need to perform to become viral and get over a million views 
Like, how, how do you feel as someone who manages and is a human being and not an AI artificial intelligent person uh, when it comes to that? Um, it's interesting because I feel once this really advances, like people like me could become obsolete if like you, you learn like the right keyword searches, but I'm, I'm trying to dabble in like that AI stuff a lot more. Like today I work with, um, like someone, like a pretty big soccer player and I didn't know what to ask him for content. So I literally went on chat GPT earlier and was like, what do you ask someone who's won a lot of trophies in soccer? And I just got a list of everything I should be saying to him so that we can create content. So like that AI aspect, it's so useful if you understand how to uh, make it a compliment what you're already doing. Right, because the one thing that I noticed, especially when it comes to just understanding AI and looking at AI uh, is that it has definitely enhanced my capability to get things done. And what I've noticed is, is that the AI is only as smart as the individual requesting something. Exactly. And I, dude, I didn't know how to request stuff at first. So I'd work with TikTokers. Um, like they might have like a few million followers and we're like, yo, let's like hop on ChatGPT and like make something cool. And I literally just was bad at <laughs> asking questions. And then one of my other friends started asking questions to it and it was brilliant. And I'm like, oh, that's how you articulate yourself. So it's it's learning from us, but also ChatGPT is uh, algorithmically training us to speak its language better. So I'm like, I'm now being trained to like learn how to actuate uh, requests in a way that it can understand. And there's no, um, I guess like confusion in my wording. So that, that's been an interesting thing to learn about. Yeah, no, that that is kind of fascinating because I'm just thinking about it as well. Because I know there's somebody that went and said that ChatGPT just doesn't do a good job for them because they went and they asked something. And I've asked something myself, but I have no problem going and workshopping with ChatGPT. And because I went and I said, okay, I want to make a YouTube script. Can you make me a YouTube script? So they made me one and it was okay. So then I asked it, all right, the part where you said jump off the fence, can we change that to something that works better in winter weather? And then they're like, oh, okay. Well, then maybe you put on a hat and put on gloves and maybe put a bunch of cotton balls together and throw the cotton balls. And I'm like, okay, cool. Once again, it all matters about the particular influencer, if they can actually pull off the directions being given. But it was fascinating to see that as I gave it more input, it did a better job. And the other thing that, that I noticed is a big mistake that people make in ChatGPT is they don't segment their conversations into various chats because there's multiple times where you can go and tap on new chat and start over. And if you keep something in a chat, for example, it goes and it actually remembers what you wrote previously. So it becomes more intelligent in that conversation versus if you were to start the conversation over again, asking a relevant question to what you asked earlier, but it doesn't have the context. That that's a really good point. Like, I don't really know how advanced these like AI things are because like I, I don't ask it. OK, you gave me three ideas. I won't say the next inquiry like, hey, give me 17 more. But that's what you should be doing. And you learn that through uh, doing this more often. And I think I'm just going to see. Yeah, Tatiana is here. Like she, we were talking yesterday about like sports marketing and agency stuff. And Tatiana, I don't know if you heard like what I was saying uh, about it earlier, but um, so when I when I just signed this like World Cup winner uh, this past week, I literally have no clue what I want to post about, and I've known him for like most of my life. So I was like just on this AI platform, and I said, "What are some interesting questions you would ask a World Cup winner?" And if you are in sports marketing, like you could say, "What are great questions to ask someone who plays football is in the Super Bowl or blah blah blah." And now I you just come up with however many uh, responses or inquiries out of that as you want. So like questions it gave me were like, how has winning the World Cup impacted your career? And can you describe the emotions when you scored a winning goal, which like like he did score uh, like many goals in like the final, which was dope. So I didn't know what to ask. And I just asked Chad GPT, he'll come up with these questions and Google them basically for me and, and brought it here. So that that's super helpful, I think, too. So if we think of people like Jimmy Fallon, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, 
Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember all the various various ones, but they have a team of writers that tell them what to ask the celebrities. ChatGPT is literally becoming your office of writers, which means that technically some of these humanoids are going to need to up their game. Or what I'd like to propose is that is the managers going to be less like yourself and be more you teaming up with people like myself who don't have the ability to talk to businesses and get sponsorship, et cetera, et cetera, but know exactly what to do to push the right buttons to output something that would take you maybe five, six hours of workshopping where I can go and I can get that in 10, 15 minutes. Couldn't have said that better. That's exactly that. Like there, it becomes an accessory or to what we're doing and doesn't necessarily make me obsolete, but just I work with different people now. <laughs> like that, that's what I see coming of this. And uh, yeah, there's so many ways that you can use like AI to just help grow what you're doing. And it all it is is just doing what you would normally do into a Google search, but just within that one website. So like I might search as a content creator, like, like Johan is in here right? and she's got the rent to park. Um, like application company and I might look up on Google prior to like AI searches I might look up um what are the worst issues with parking what cities have like the worst parking like ever you know and now I would just ask ChatGPT like what questions should I answer about parking like what are the most asked about questions or park about parking what are the most stressful things about parking your car and all of a sudden AI will just give you 55,000 like issues that uh, come from parking. And then you could present your company, Johan, of like, okay, well, this is how we solve it. So that it's just applications for AI. I love this shit. Perfect. So I want to end with, with one mega final question, which I think is going to be really important and kind of touched on things that you were saying, is that when it comes to the future AI influencer, is it going to be a case where the concept of things like be real, where it forces you to take a real picture with no filters, no any of this, et cetera, et cetera, is going to beat the AI? Or platforms like we are here on Fanbase right now, who gives you ridiculous amount of features, that's going to be where the influences are, or is there space for both? I think definitely space for both. Like. I remember um, in 2020, I would see a lot of these like musicians um, who they, they had budgets, right? Like they were A-listers and they would use their money for creating AI versions of themselves so that they didn't have to do performances. Like you could see a cartoonized version of them. And then all these major artists started doing that. And I'm like, oh, that's a future I, I see. It's like not actually you who is the commodity. Like it is your likeness, but you can spend time um, doing other stuff. So I know like Juice World, they did that a lot, uh, especially after he uh, passed away, like this big artist. Um, all you see are just animated versions of something. They're making music videos. Like I know one of the editors for the music videos and it's like, it's crazy. Like they, they have all this opportunity to keep like a legacy going now. You don't want to like milk someone's legacy and make them like a bad <laughs> image or something. You know, there's always like lines that you have to teeter on, but um, it, it, there's so much for so much opportunity that it's impossible to say like oh, only one way is allowable now there's there's space for both all right time for final thoughts based on this conversation today what should an influencer that's listening in what should they gain from from this what's the recap if you are stuck with content creation ai is a pretty good accessory to help you either come up with ideas or just like get rid of that brain clog. The only thing you have to learn is how to speak to it properly. And once you figure that out, I think AI just is an accompaniment to what you do. You don't have to worry about it fully like taking over and like uh, making you obsolete if that's a, a fear. If anything, like this is a, just a great way to be better at what you do and just get things done faster. It's like once you learn a, a keyboard shortcut for something that's taken you so long uh, prior to having that shortcut for it. Now, all of a sudden, you can do things faster. You just have to know you're not obsolete. You're just being given access to something to make you a bigger person. So I hope that's not too much of a ramble, but I like this AI stuff, and it's it's great for helping with idea generation. That should be the gist of it. 
Perfect. So if you enjoyed this conversation, you can always join us live on Fanbase and check us out. So at Chuan, at Techie. And that is at 8 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Along with that, if you're watching this afterwards, make sure to like, subscribe, or click on whatever you need to feed the algorithm with because everybody's creating all these different buttons that you need to push to go into. <laughs> exactly. It's like fan base has its love and everybody's got their thing. So however you're watching it, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week with a exciting topic. Have a great day. Take care, y'all. Thanks for being here.